Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to set up a couple of resetting methods. So if we're going to leave the area, the puzzle is going to reset itself. And also we're going to introduce a reset switch, which allows us to reset our puzzle. So let's get started. Now, if you're working with some basic numbers like 15, 30, 45 degree rotations, the reaching of the end goal would be a lot easier in multiple different types of these scenarios. But in our case, the rotations are very difficult. The angles are not consistent. So uh, you would have to have a lot of clicks and a lot of math knowledge in, to be able to finish this puzzle. So let's set up a reset button for the ones like myself who are struggling with the math and i'll probably if i would fail this the first time i would probably keep on failing this and i would give up on this game so let's set up a reset switch and the first thing we need to do is we need to store the location of the default default location basically we already kind of have it but it's constantly getting updated once we are done with the rotation so we need to store the actual the beginning position so I'm going to go inside of my BP bridge over here. So here we have the rotation set up. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add another one. So we're going to have four controls, 0, 1, 2, 3. And we're going to have another one over here. So we're going to click add. So we have a fifth one. And I'm just going to grab the relative rotation and plug that into the number four. Like this. There we go. So that's what it's going to look like. And now, so basically, it's going to store the default position at all times because we are never updating this array. It only gets set up once at the start of the game. Okay, so far, so good. So now we actually need to set up some kind of a way how we can reset this. So let's go inside of our puzzle master. And let's update the code a little bit. So we already have something on the event tick. We, I want this to be rotating smoothly. I want to keep on using the tick event. Uh, but this code at this shape and form isn't going to work exactly perfect. But we can modify this slightly to make it work with our system. So what I want to do is I want to introduce another control. Which would allow me to reset the whole thing. So I'm going to use let's say keyboard key 1 for this example. And then I will just simply run the same code. I will try and rotate the puzzle like this. But I will use that last index that we set up. So in this case, the index number four. As you can see, we're not using it over here. We have zero, one, two, three. And we're going to be using number four on uh, this one. Now, if we're going to run this right now, you will see that it's going to look very odd. So we can come over here. And as you can see, this is our rotation. And it keeps on working. But we don't want it to do so. We want it to rotate back to that specific rotation instead of adding it like we are doing over here. We are combining rotations together. So let's just grab our set relative rotation node. Let's bring it back and let's set up something slightly different. So first and foremost, I want to have the possibility to pick between two options. So in this case, we're going to grab our new rotation and we're going to do a select rotator so we can pick from two different options. And those options will be, so the B route is going to be the, the route that we picked before. So our regular rotation adding and all that stuff. And then for the A route, we're going to do a lerp. We're going to lerp two rotators together. And so for the A route, we're going to be using our starting rotation. So that's where the object is currently right now. And the B route is actually going to be the end position of our rotation. So what I'm going to do again from the rotations, I'm going to get a copy just like we do up here, but I'm going to grab another one because this one is split. We're going to use the same rotation index. So everything over here is going to be the same. And this is going to be our B route. So it's going to lerp from where it is right now to that uh, stock position that we stored in the array. Now for the alpha, we can actually use the same thing we use over here, our timer, because it is between 0 and 1. So we can grab our alpha and plug that into here. Now we need to set up some kind of a condition on which we actually use any of these. So we have pick A. So what I'm going to do, so this one is going to be a little long uh, when it comes for a uh, wiring, basically, because we need our data variable. From this, we want to get a copy from any 
object that we have inside of it. So in this case, let's say we, we speak about the bridge puzzle. We have three entries. We want to grab any. So the most logical thing is to grab the zero one because it's always going to be there if we have something in it. We want to split it because from the rotations, we want to get the length of this. And the length is, in this case, it is going to return us five because we have five entries. One, two, three, four, five. But our rotation uh, resetting uh, resetting control is the index four. So we want to do minus one. So five minus one is going to be four. And we want to see if this number is equal to our rotation index. So we want to see if this guy is actually four. And then if it is four, then we can go ahead and lerp and run this code basically. So that's a bit complicated and a lot of nodes, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Um, and one thing that we can do to slightly clean this whole thing up, we can actually flip the values so we can do a not on this Boolean. And so basically, if it's going to be true, it's going to return false. If it's false, it's going to return true. So it's going to flip it. So that means that we can actually flip these around as well to make it look slightly bit cleaner. It's not perfect, but it's at least something. Okay. So that's good for this part. Now we need to do basically not exactly the same, but something very similar at the bottom over here, except for this one is going to be a lot simpler. So again, grab our relative rotation on all the nodes after it, bring it back. Let's do a select rotator. Now we want to make sure that we actually connect this to over here as well so that we reset the starting position like this. Then so the A route is going to be whatever we used before. And for the B route, we're going to be using a simply this node right here. So we're going to get the rotation. So if it's going to be four, then that means that it's it wants to reset it. So we're going to use that rotator instead. So we're not going to combine anything. So it's simply we just skip this node basically. And then for the condition, well, let's bring these down a bit. Let's go up here back and let's copy the same exact condition to down here as well like uh, this there we go now we could set up something different as well we could set up some some kind of a variable over here that would remove all of these nodes i chose not to uh, so that you can see the logic which we are using to achieve this but maybe i would suggest that you actually would grab this make this into a variable instead and call this i don't know the reset index and then you could check if it's equal over here right so there would be options like that as well and that way you would remove these nodes all this chunk but in a complete project i would probably do that i would choose to create an index out of this and you could make this basically at the very beginning of the game so you could run this on a begin play so let me just show you that real quick as well uh so the idea would be let's say we have a begin play right and then we have these nodes and I would do set the variable like this and boom. So we have it set up. But the issue is that this this is going to get ran first or it's going to be overridden by all the child's begin play. So what I would do is so set this up, then go into the child blueprints, grab its begin play, right click it and add call to parent function and then run that thing at the very end after we have actually set this up. Because if we're going to initiate this before, then, well, it's simply going to be zero. There's going to be nothing of it because this object doesn't even exist, right? The array is empty at this point. So we want to make sure that we run that code after we have set up the arrays. And that way we can then use this new variable instead of this whole chunk that we have over here. And just to demonstrate it, we can grab this set it up and you will see that it still is going to work basically the same way so we grab this new value boom compile save hit play and let's test this out so we walk up here we rotate our puzzle click one boom it goes back to the default state as you can see there we go. So that's one of the options. So we can set up a control like that. Now, let me real quickly show you how we can actually make this work for our controls that we have with the cones. So basically in this specific puzzle, so we don't have to click the one. So first we need to duplicate the cone again. I think that would be the best option. 
like this. So we have another cone, which would be our reset cone. And let's say we just change the material of it to something different. So we know the difference. And then let's see, what do we need to change over here? Uh, everything, all of this is the same roughly, except for we need another cone. So we have the cone number five. Uh, then we want to go ahead and run our keyboard key one, override it so it doesn't grab the code from the parent and change the index. So max was four, uh, max was three. Now it's four like this. And I believe that's it. And our reset switch should now work with the cones. So let's say we rotate, rotate, rotate. We go till the end. There we go. Seems to be good. Okay, so that's another option. And another option would be, let's say you don't want the players to be able to see this. Let's say you have multiple different uh, obstacles, multiple different puzzles inside of the level, and you can do multiple of them at the same time. You want the player to go away from the puzzle for it to reset. So you could either set up a, uh, basically in the puzzle master, you could set up a, uh, another box or you could do that in a child blueprint as well. So it doesn't really matter that much I'm gonna go ahead and set mine up over here in the child blueprint. So I'm gonna add a new box box collision And let's make this quite a bit bigger So let's say this was something like 800 seems to be good, I guess uh, maybe a bit bigger like this. There we go. So we have a box. And once we will leave this box, it's going to reset our puzzle for us. So we're going to go ahead and do on end overlap. So whenever a character leaves this area. And in this case, I want to make sure that that is the character. Our player actually is leaving the area and not something else, right? So I'm going to go ahead and cast to the character real quick. So cast to third person character like this then if it's true then that means well our character left the area and we're gonna go ahead and do try rotate and we're gonna use our index for the reset so it's the index number four like this so let's test this out let's rotate this leave the area and boom the puzzle relocates itself back to its default state so that's going to be it for this episode hope you learned something new hope this was helpful if you have any ideas suggestions leave them down in the comment section below and i see you in the next one